Hello, and welcome to the final part of Metal Slug 3. This playthrough is actually twice the length of the each of the other Metal Slug games, so... Well, in part length, anyway. Yeah, so, you know, that's it's cool, I guess. Uh, anyway, we're, we're in the alien mothership thing now. Are there supposed to be Daleks? Probably, yeah. I didn't see it until now, but probably. The, the funniest part is that they have joysticks to control their own bodies. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that considering the dialects they probably would have themselves set up like that uh, they have, they're in robot bodies with robot arms that use their robot arms to control joysticks that control the robot bodies it's <laughs> the art designer must have been having a laugh <laughs> yeah they're, they're just trying to be as schlocky as possible because that's just what they're going for so you know I can I can dig that I do kind of miss the um, the time when Metal Slug was a military game about military things happening, but at the same time, what the hell? Revel in the I, silliness. I know that some of the later games kind of scroll back on that. Like, I yeah. think 4 and 5, I, I've never played those, but I know that I think 4 and 5 kind of make it more, oh, military and robots, as opposed to, like, aliens and mummies yeah. and zombies and all that stuff. But I think, I think that part of what made two and three fun was like, okay, what am I? What's what am I gonna see next? So I do think that at some point maybe dialing it back is maybe the smart idea, so that then you can later be surprised again. It's yeah, you know? it's kind of it's kind of it's kind of the Saints Row effect, really. Where the first Saints Row was kind of just a really f uh, silly version of GTA. Uh, and then the Saints Row 2 and 3 amped up the silliness gradually until finally in Saints Row 4 you were like the president <laughs> or something. Or you were in virtual reality. I forget which which game was the one that did that. And... <laughs> yeah, but, see, but unlike... The, I think in Saints Row's case, it is, it is now better known for its inherent silliness. Yeah, it, it, it's better known for its inherent silliness because before that it was kind of just that game that was like GTA. Yeah. <laughs> Um, like GTA, but and but uh, I don't, I, anybody wants to get rid of that. What, one you know, of the but. things that distinguished Saints Row was that uh, I think it was GTA 4 that opened up on this kind of slog of tutorials, and then there was the Saints Row game that came out around a, around the same time that just lets you jump butt first into the in, into the crazy, and uh, people compared that in a rather um, unfavorable way as far as GTA was concerned. There. Were Probably given GTA 4 a little too little credit, but you know, surface impressions. So I actually do not like this part because, again, I think that a lot of these guys take a crap ton of bullets to kill, like the the big War of the Worlds looking things, especially. Do they kill you on contact or? Uh, I think you do have to be here? hit by an attack, but they can blow themselves up at any point, basically. So you know. I like how the former enemy soldiers are fighting with you here. Yeah, that is, I, I do like that. They kind of did that in Metal Slug X as well. But it, they're more... They One cool thing is, is that they actually do help you. If an enemy runs into one of their bullets, they die. So they're not just there for short show. You know? Although yeah. I jumped I jumped into that to that bouncing blob like a moron there. But you oh, know. There's so many dead soldiers. Oh, yeah. You know, because they're... War is hell. I mean, they can... Here's the thing. They can be beaten by me. All right, so if they can be beaten by me, and I'm dying this much to the aliens, do you think they stand a chance against the aliens? Look at you. You don't even have a name tag. <laughs> what chance do you have? Let's uh, do everyone a favor and fall down. I don't, but he does. This is when we see... Uh, Thor Ragnarok have, is such a good movie. If you have a name tag, that just means you get to die at a more dramatic death. Oh, oh, that's actually one of my favorite jokes in uh, a webcomic I follow is called Order of the Stick. And at one point, the characters are running away from a battle that they've lost. And there are two nameless guards following them. And then one of the guards are just about to die. And then they're like, no, you can't die. It's just like, you're, you're a nameless guard. Of course you're going to die. It's like, no, I actually have a name. My name is Kazumi. And then the character is suddenly better. And it's like, oh, I guess having a name really does help. And so the other character decides to hide their name just in case they do start dying so that they can save it for an emergency. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Also, I hate this boss because there's no the first fa the second phase is actually easier I think because the big ones move slower so you can actually dodge them, but you can't really dodge the other ones. I've probably said I hate this boss like ten times, but I think that's the weakest part of the game is the boss fights. Yeah, it's kind of a clusterfuck. The poor thing's kind of cute when it's set setting like that, though. Feel bad. There's for, no dynamo, though. Feel bad for beating it up. I mean, it's just a really big version of the alien mooks you were fighting earlier. Yeah, but I don't know. I I always I always liked the design for those guys, you know. Uh, oh no, also, they've been cloning our friend. Yeah, so the the enemy you're fighting here will always look like whoever got kidnapped too, which is pretty cool. And they also drop so. alien eggs, which you can then eat and become fat. So, 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 does the cloning technology also clone their clothes and firearms? Actually, you know what? Something interesting is if they clone Tarma, they don't clone his sunglasses, which is interesting. But huh. they still clone his his clothes. So yeah, I guess you know it's a little little weird like the, that. The sunglasses are too tacky. <laughs> it's just it's one of those things like oh yeah, they wouldn't clone his sunglasses because they're not part of his body. But then they still clone his clothes, and you just don't think about it. <laughs> and his gun. Yeah. Well, maybe they the, gave them guns. I don't know. Uh, they made sure to give him the same model of antique pistol he was firing, rather well, he's than been the laser beating, guns that they have. Well, he's been, well, he's been beating their asses with his normal guns. So. Yeah, that gun. That gun has infinite ammo, man. And that, that stuff's strong. Also, I love the the, the <laughs> I love the different gymnastic stuff you do in a freaking tank to dodge these things. It's like, okay, yeah. So is there any is there any benefit for being fat besides cushion for the push? Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I'm going to ignore that phrase. Uh, your your <laughs> arm your your attacks are stronger when you're fat, so oh, okay. you move a little bit more slowly though. So it's one of those things where it's just like, do you want to be able to kill things better? I'm or... not really sure how being fat affects the firepower of your firearm. Well, look, it, it becoming fat gives you a bigger a bigger gun, you know. So, yeah. Oh, you can actually oh. see, like, the fat ripple on his body. Yeah. So that's... And besides, I, was under, I was just under the impression that being fat was like an adding an extra hit point or something. No, you still die in one hit. You're yeah. just you're just fat. Oh, I also... I thought bulls bounced off fat people. <laughs> also, your your knife becomes a fork, which automatically yeah, makes... Yeah, I just noticed that, too. It automatically makes it the best. So the old boss is helping you out. That's kind of yeah. cool. Yeah. Come on, boy. <laughs> yeah, some the the fat wears off uh, after a while if you. Well, don't. you had to walk a long way to get here. <laughs> oh, actually, you know what? I'm actually reminded of uh, Wally, -E, where the reason why everybody came fat is because nobody remembered that they had a workout facility on the planet on the ship. So it's just like, wait, we have a we have a track. <laughs> I haven't watched that movie in years. I should go back to that at some point. Okay, you can stop screaming now. Thanks. I was going to say, this glass case has a lot of health to it. Yeah, there we go. Well, it's alien glass, so, you know. Oh, glad you're, glad you're okay and not mentally scarred from being probed and cloned several thousand glad times. Glad you regained consciousness at that exact moment. <laughs> It's convenient. <laughs> so now they're not just clones, but they're zombie clones! Zombie alien clones, to be more precise. So... Uh, okay. Sure, whatever. We were going to the right anyway. You know, just eventually <laughs> I want one of these kinds of games to make you go left for the entire time, just to screw with you. You know, uh, you know that's it's, it's actually kind of cool that in this final section, they turn your own super zombie attack against you. Oh yeah, that that is one of the cool parts. I do like the 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 entire escape sequence on the on the ship is really cool. I do have to say. Ooh, so if you don't have a strong enough weapon, you just can't you can't brute force your way through this. No, you just have to you just have to wait, and you will run out of bullets because the game just doesn't give you enough. So you just have to you have to watch out for the zombies and time when to duck, you know, and also know where the right position 
to stand without getting hurt is as well. So. Uh oh, all out of bullets. What is that from? Because you reference Looney Tunes. Looney Tunes. Oh, okay. Oh no, I remember that now. Because I, I actually remember they when I was a kid they actually still did air, like Looney Tunes and stuff on TV. I don't know if they do that anymore. No, they really don't. From what I can I tell. think they keep it now to DVDs and Blu-rays. Which well, is a shame. Yeah, because like they did have like in even stuff like Tom and Jerry, they still aired like, like not even just like at six in the morning, like after school when kids would actually be watching TV when I was younger. So I think it's just the nature of the humor and the the time of its creation. Nah. That I think it well, Looney Tunes is still so funny. Well, that yeah, like I, I mean, yeah, certainly I, some I, I of it dated, but yeah. a lot of it, like you know, like Wile E. Coyote and Tom and Jerry are pretty. It's just slapstick, so they're pretty timeless cartoons. So I don't know why they would think that any of it's dated. Like, if anything, I they probably own the rights to that pretty... Like, they wouldn't have to pay a whole lot to, to show that or whatever, you know? I think that it'd be perfect filler material. Because it's not like networks like Cartoon Network you know, have an excess of shows that they need to run at any given time, you know? I think for them as a company, it's easier and safer to put it on a DVD and Blu-ray that has a disclaimer at the beginning of every cartoon. Well, not all of them were that it, racist. Right. So. No, I, and, I, and that I agree. I, I, not every not every single one of them needs something Focus like that. tests, you know? Yeah. Yeah, like, I mean, they run they're the not gonna now. they're not gonna show they're not gonna show, like, the one where Bugs Bunny fights in World War II anymore, but, like, most of them are fine. Damn it. Stupid zombie me. <laughs> well, it's really good that you did a thing on the computer, Eerie. That helped lots. Chris. <laughs> good thing you know how it works. Nope. No, you don't know how it works. Okay. That no, woman is playing Galaga. <laughs> and just use the old Fonz really fix that works for everything. <laughs> yeah, but she didn't have a helmet on. Yeah, well, we fell out in a tank, so that's that's fi fine, I think. We get to finish inside the actual metal slug. That's uh, or kind not. of a kind of a cool um, cool touch that they that they brought the the titular vehicle into prominence one last time. If I go down, I'm taking you with me. Yeah, so this boss is fun once you get used to it. Like, there is, I think, like, I, there's a lot to take in, um, but once you kind of get the, the hang of knowing when the, when the certain projectiles are going to come and when to get in and out of the slug, I do think it is a lot of fun. It just takes a lot of practice, and it's not like there's a boss rush mode or anything in this game. If you're going to fight the final boss, you have to get all the way through the game to get there, you know. So, so would you say the final boss is one of the one of the high points of the high points of the gameplay? Yeah, I think, you know, I didn't like it the first time I played it, but it it's more fair than a lot of the other ones, I think. So, cuz everything is telegraphed, you just have to know where to look, you know. Like the mouth will light up when the balls are coming from the bottom and the brain will light up when there's going to be the shockwave. There I mean there's tells for the other bosses too but i just i feel like the it's perilous but you can dodge everything if you're thinking quickly so and also like narratively i just find it cool when you're falling from space to fight the final boss you know i guess that's my sonic adventure 2 fanboyness kicking I in also there like how the the kidnapped character comes in to back you up in a flying saucer <laughs> yeah where did you get that? that they don't know how to use specifically because they don't the firing rate's pitiful. Uh, well, it was designed for spaghetti aliens, John. Okay. Like, let's say you try to fly one of their flying saucers. Hey, our fingers are like spaghetti. Yeah, but like you, you, they have like 20,000 spaghetti fingers. You were just talking about how you can dodge everything and that it's all telegraphed and all. But you just sort of gave up trying to do that. <laughs> well, you, I'm saying when you're playing at a high level. As we have seen, I do not play at a high level. Because <laughs> I am just sort of... You're at this point, up. I don't play at a high level. I just play high. So, you see, at this point, I've given up and resorted to the strategy of die a whole bunch and chuck bombs at the brain. So, you know. Like, if I manage to not die and man get to use my heavy machine gun, too, that's just a bonus. Oh, there it goes. 
Also, you blow up you blow up its brain, and that's gross. Yay, we did it. We I saved the wheels, world. Uh, I hope these wheels have really good shock absorbers. Because uh, I don't think this was made for orbital landings. <laughs> this is going to suck. <laughs> well, we really should have just jumped onto their UFO, actually. So yeah, uh, that's just 30 continues to get through one playthrough. I died a whole lot more <laughs> trying to get the rest of the... Uh, paths done so yeah i probably died something like 50 times total so you know that i'm good at video games <laughs> oh, okay well, and then, there's and then fio drowned and this is, <laughs> and this is how in the hunt begins <laughs> i do like that they have specific animations for both the character you're playing as and the character who gets kidnapped in that sequence okay so I get the symbolism behind throwing away the gun, like, the the conflict's over, we finally won. But there's four more games, so... Well, it, it, it's a revolver, so the bullets are probably useless at this point. Yeah, that, that makes sense. <laughs> and they use the last bullets in the world. Yeah. It's, it's like Mega Man X5, where it's just like, oh, this is supposed to be the end, but never mind, we want more money, so we're gonna make more sequels. Yeah, then the revolver comes back in the next game and asks, how'd you do it? Or maybe <laughs> Theo was myself. just afraid someone would arrest her for murdering the alien leader. Huh. Hmm. What? Why? <laughs> she didn't even use the revolver for it. She just chucked bombs oh. at his brain for five minutes. Speaking of... Oh, uh, yeah. That's pretty gross, actually. Like, at this point, I'm... I'm, I'm not looking at the credits because I don't think anybody actually watches the credits. So I'm just like looking at my phone or whatever. So I'm actually looking at the art they have of the dead final boss. And I'm like, yeah, that's pretty gross. <laughs> oh, wow. There was actually a programming wizard on this game. <laughs> okay. Uh, three quarters of Abba may help make this game. Who did they drop? Well, was one of the B people. So. I like how <laughs> I like how Japanese credits always have program as one of the listings. I mean programmers. Well, they Maybe. call it enemy's brain as opposed to enemy AI, so you know. Hiya. It's the it's the late '90s slash early 2000s is when they stopped doing silly programmer names, probably because you know they realized, wait, we have enough space to actually put our entire name in the credits so they started doing that and i i just i miss you know having what's it who's its face papa uh um, yuki chan's papa yuki chan's papa yeah and all that <laughs> that poor <Random> fish, fish. <laughs> oh man get the final boss in the next game no <laughs> oh so yeah, that's my high score. It is not hard to beat, so go at it. Don't you just hate it when you're swimming along and someone dumps a revolver on your head from several thousand leagues above you? Like you wouldn't believe. Eh, that's just living in America. 